Welcome back to Curse, Code, and Crown, a live play Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition podcast featuring a fully original world and campaign. I am the wizard Cronox, observer of time. Curse, Code, and Crown features our regular voiceover artists and improvisers. Laura Elizabeth as the Orc Countant Eta and Princess Gwendolyn. Tyler Hewitt as Maka Deathcap and Ryan LaPlante as Duncan Kindano alongside our dungeon master, the incredible Tom McGee. So get ready for an adventure including thrills, chills, and hope for a brighter tomorrow. It's time for Curse, Code, and Crown! The Elos Blade drops to the ground, and uh, as as happens in, uh, in, you know, dramatic cinematic versions of such things, uh, Maka, Duncan, and Ita, you all kind of like peer down over it um, and uh, see the sword just kind of uh, resting there still. There's always something a little um, a little off-putting about Gwendolyn leaving her armor um, <laughs> because, I mean, I found this with puppets a lot, like when I was doing puppeteering, that um, if you just leave a puppet around, they call it a dead puppet because it's so unnerving to look at something that's been fully animate, just stop mm. animating. <laughs> Um, and similarly, it's like, if a suit of armor doesn't move fine, if the suit of armor does move fine, but just immediately cut into dead weight and falling apart. And then the sword collapsing is a, uh, is a strange experience for all involved, uh, particularly since they have no way of reaching, um, Gwendolyn within the blade. Uh, so, um, the, the, you, you take a moment kind of staring at it. Um, and, uh, Maka, um, would you still be using your detect magic? Do you think? Um, I have to see if it's concentration because I think enhance ability is concentration, so I'd have to turn it off. Oh, I see. Mm. Let me quickly see. I would assume you would keep it uh, enhance ability on, right? Yeah, yeah. It is yes. concentration, so I think detect magic is cool. Bye -bye. Right. Yeah, that's, so that's... not like a oh, advantage. Uh, I don't think so. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, Gwendolyn yeah. tries to force the jaws of the dragon open. So I'm like, don't worry, I got this. Oh, my arms are weak again. Oh, and Mark is just like, ha ha. Like. Got you. Yeah, now with now with yeah, I activate uh detect magic and I can just watch her get eviscerated by a magic dragon. Like, oh. <laughs> yes. Good, it worked. Yes. Yeah. Um so uh that's fine. Um staring at the sword, um it is lying uh completely still um and uh is uh un unimpressive. Um but uh Duncan, I think you'd probably be watching most intently, uh, given kind of the the stakes of this for you, um, both around the holy relic and around, you know, your princess. Um you uh as you kind of uh would you pick up the sword, do you think, or would you just examine it on the ground? I think Duncan would just let it play. Like he doesn't know the magical rules about this. So it's yeah, kind of like yeah. where it falls, he'd just be staring at it like so intensely from where yeah. he stands. Absolutely. Okay. So as you stare at it, um you think um that you can see um a, a metallic edge, just a, a a hint of it. And you're pretty sure that wasn't there before. Um, but uh sure enough, as you kind of um lean down and look, um, you can see that just the the slightest hint of an edge is is starting to show. Um, it's almost like one of those uh, slow time lapse videos where like it didn't look like anything changed, but as you're looking, you realize it has, and it, it might be very, very, very incrementally growing. Um, so it seems that Gwendolyn is doing something in the sword, uh, but you are currently unsure as to what. Also, perhaps most importantly, it looks like whatever it is is not going to be a fast process. All right, so Marka, swords kill people and then absorb maybe their souls, right? We put a soul in this, and now it's re-swording. Is this something we should be concerned about? Like, is she going to come back out? What the fuck did you tell her to do? And how do we get her back? We have to go for lunch with the people who pulled us out of the ocean. Everything Gwendolyn has done with this sword and armor has been instinct has been naturally coming to her no training no no study of how this works i do not know what happens next 
but I trust in Gwendolyn. Hmm? I, I, I don't know if you should. She gave care in her body. Like, I just, I want to point out the track record. It's sort of like trust, but prepare for the worst is how you should deal with Gwendolyn over time, I've learned. Hmm. Then what do you predict the worst to be? I don't know. Maybe she can't come back out of the sword. I don't. <sighs> okay, so we have to assume she's okay because there's nothing any of us can do. Do we just leave this here? Do we take her armor and sword with us? What feels like the right move to you? Hmm. I suppose there is no harm in leaving the sword and armor in this room as we move on to the next to speak with our hosts. Hmm? All right. Uh, Wait, you have lunch. So the, the argument is you have lunch obligations. So you have to leave Gwendolyn here. Duncan's <laughs> going to lean down happening? and <laughs> scoop up the armor and just put it on the bed and be like, all right, he picks up the sword and he just starts talking into the blade in that like old person yelling into a cell phone they don't understand and be like, all right, Gwendolyn, we're going to give you five more minutes and then we're just going to find out where the fuck we are. Come back out within five minutes if you want to find out how monkeys can fly. Uh, he puts the sword on the bed and then he'll sit with like his little countdown, I guess, in his head. He doesn't have a watch, so he's just going to count out five minutes. Great. Uh, Ida, how are you responding to all of this? Um, I think Ida's kind of not, she's not saying anything. Yeah, this is like in her head, she's just like, I may have caused this. I will. <laughs> this may be, you know, partially my fault. So she'll. <laughs> not, not a one to chime in on. Huh? No. Nah. Yeah, nah. fair enough. Um, all right. Uh, five minutes come and go. And uh, there is no, uh, no change from the sword. Um, Look, that, to, uh, to be clear, Gwendolyn can only do this for 10 minutes before she's forced back into her body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want yeah. to be clear. It's interesting. Um, <laughs> we'll see if that's true when you combine that with the Ellos blade. Yeah, I mean, no, it is. I've okay. also no, it no, also no. something uh, like I'm soul bound to. So yeah, yeah, yeah I get that. Okay, uh, that that's helpful information. Um, okay, so um, I guess then we will cut to uh, inside the sword, um, Gwendolyn. Um, you um, open your eyes uh, to find yourself um, in a uh, sort of a. a uh, seemingly um, a void of um, dark swirling mist. Um, mm. It's kind of um, that uh, that gray of, of um, not like, uh, you know, a like chemical burn fire smoke. It's like that dark, heavy, like that kind of very yep. light wood, you know, distant wood burn um, smoke. Mm. Um, it has no smell, um, but there there's a lot of it. Uh, and it seems to be swirling in all directions. Uh, you are able to kind of walk quote unquote, um, mm -hmm. but you get the sense that this is more of a very similar to like an astral projection kind of vibe rather than a, like I'm in a space, normal, normal space. Um, looking down, um, you realize uh, that you are in uh, your human body again. Um, however, um, you notice that now um, you seem to have um, almost a, uh, you're not wearing armor, but there are plates of armor um, that seem almost fused to your skin. Um, mm. So as you, you begin to examine yourself, you realize that uh, your conception of self has started to shift um, and that you're no longer purely, your brain no longer views yourself purely in human terms. You're starting to view yourself in armor terms. Um, so as a result, you can kind of think of it as like, for lack of better analogy, probably like video game or action figure armor where there aren't like straps and things necessarily. The armor is just like, like the gauntlets are just there, there and yeah. like your hands are out, but you've got like um, just sort of the, uh, the top of hand guards on the backs of your hands. It's not like, you know, it's like fuses into the skin or anything. It's just, you're just armored though, mm. though walking. Um, it's cool. You kind of got like a badass like Zelda in full like battle garb. Uh, not, you know, chic battle garb, but like you know, I yep. have to go Zelda ing battle garb. I got gotcha. um, vibe going. Uh, and um, in the darkness uh, ahead of you, uh, you hear um, a moan of pain. Um, hello, hello. Um, you hear uh, 
silence for for a moment and then uh, uh sort of a, a croaked uh um very kind of um forced voice uh just yell hello is is there help out there um i mean i think i'm in here with with you master um, ellos um not exactly um i thought maybe you were ellos uh and there's like a, a coughed choke um and uh you hear just kind of a wouldn't that be a lovely <coughs> Well, I suppose I'm fucked then. Thanks for nothing. But wait, wait. <laughs> you just no. hear a groan of pain. But no, I'm 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 Gwendolyn. We've been like hanging out for a bit. Um, do you go in search of the voice, or are you just gonna kind yeah, of? Yeah, I think I'm. Going? I'm gonna basically <laughs> just stand yelling into the. Dark. I mean, honestly, it is an option. Uh, we joked earlier about like an ethereal dragon just hanging out in here. Like, it's cool. It would also be fair to be like. Want to help, but over here. <laughs> no, I think Gwendolyn would be kind of like doing that searching, like looking all around, walking through the mist, trying okay. to trying to find where the voice gets louder. All right. So for this, let's go with, um, I would give you investigation or uh, perception. Um. Stat-wise, I want to say investigation. Oh, it's probably. <laughs> well, how would how would Gwendolyn go about it? Because keep in mind, like, I, I know this this is something we, we all know, but it's always worth like making explicit again. Your stats generally reflect the way your character thinks about the world and, and yeah. works with the world. So if you have a high stat in something, like it's not always a metagame cheat to be like, I'm gonna use the stat. It just yeah. is kind of a logical consequence of like this is the way your character would approach it. So perception is literally like, I'm going to wander around doing like bad young, like young, young adult theater. We are just like, what? Huh? Huh? Where is this voice I'm hearing? Um, <laughs> whereas investigation would be actively trying to, to kind of puzzle out where, where the person is. Yeah. And, I think, yeah, no, she, she's like, she's pretty serious about this. So I think she, she's like, she's looking to see changes in the mist. She's listening intently for the moaning. Okay. Sure. All right, and do I have advantage still for Maka or no? Uh, he kept up the concentration, so I believe you do. Um, Tyler, is that just on her next check, or is that on uh, all ability checks? Yeah. One second. Because I ain't done a check yet. That. Oh, it would still be like your upcoming one would still definitely benefit from enhanced ability. Um, up to one hour, I can concentrate, mm -hmm. and up and and basically as many checks as you want or whatever of a certain mm. kind. And we, we all you can check of a certain kind as wisdom. Well, I, I, I bestowed wisdom check. Therefore perception. We shall go. <laughs> as long as I tell you to trust your instincts. To an hour, so That's true. yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, not 20. Oh, baby. Uh, yeah, you find him. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Just part the myth. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, even though you often find yourself uh, walking at angles that aren't uh, entirely logical to your mind, uh, like you're not always walking a straight line, um, sometimes it seems like you're walking down a flight of stairs or up a, up a sharp incline. Um, you do um, uh, eventually uh, kind of come to a um, uh, a patch of of mist uh, that almost seems to be expelled uh, around a a figure, um, and uh, you can see the the shape of sort of a uh, uh, a tall um, sort of uh, vaguely humanoid shape. So you know, two arms, two legs. Um, uh, it looks like a tall, uh, looks like he was a tall, a tall man. Um, but, uh, he is charred. Um, his, mm. uh, you can't quite make out his, his clothes or, or a lot of, uh, details about him. Uh, he's kind of laying face down on the ground. Um, his, uh, his clothing, um, kind of, uh, charred to a point of, uh, flaking off in, in ash. Um, 
And uh, you can see he's kind of doing that, like trying to get up while also kind of, is that clearly at that point of, do I just give up and lay here for a bit? Or do I try and like get my ass up and, and around? Um, but um, as, uh, as you uh, enter, he kind of um, turns to regard you. Um, he, uh, he, beneath the, the sort of soot and char uh, on, on his face, you can tell he's very, very pale. Mm. Um, almost like, um, uh, like, I mean, weirdly, the, the best example I can think of is weirdly, uh, like the blue light setting on ring lights these days where it's that like yeah. slightly bluish white, um, that's, uh, very, very, um, uh, pale to almost being white without being pure, uh, pure white. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he has, um, uh, jet black eyes with, um, sort of, uh, red irises around black pupils, um, he uh, his teeth are uh, pointed, but not in an aggressive way. Um, okay. Just sort of uh, the way that um, our our molar, not our molars, our eye teeth are. Uh, so it's not like like I've filed my teeth. Um, it's just kind of a um, you know clearly an evolutionary trait of whatever species he is. Mm-hmm. Um, his ears are pointed. Um, not quite um, elven, uh, but uh, they, they certainly do come to a point. Basically, everything about his physiology is just a little bit different than than what you're you're kind of used to seeing. Um, but also, of course, beneath um, uh, sort of soot and ash, despite clearly being very badly burned, um, you're not seeing the traits um, on his skin of of an organic response to burning. Um, mm-hmm. Like his 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 flesh isn't. Uh, charred the way that that skin burns um <clears throat> in fact it looks closer to his clothes which makes sense given that he's not in a physical yeah space um can you roll me an insight check please totally and this you can use your your mock a given advantage Great. because he's made you wise like the owl <laughs> <laughs> not 20 baby what so I think we've determined your dice might be the portrait of Dorian Gray thing of like Tyler's dice. Like every time Tyler's <laughs> dice roll crit fails, yours just start getting 20s. Um, cool. Okay. Um, so Laura, you can ask any question you want, but because it's wisdom of the owl, it must come in the form of a who. <laughs> <laughs> who is this guy? It's an easy question. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, so... Laura, with that, then um, I will give you a, a question of your choosing. But um, what that grants you is uh, you do actually uh, recognize uh, this type of face. Um, you saw it uh, back in Orville um, when the uh, the Sinkai attacked and when his uh, fractal armor sort of, uh, if you'll recall, they had a um, sort of a liquid but uh, in geometric shape. Um, armor, so everything, uh, honestly, this is such a dumb pull, but it's kind of correct. Uh, almost like the dune shields from David Lynch's Dune, uh, but if they mm-hmm. weren't just like giant blocks of tofu, gotcha. Um, so, uh, when those kind of, um, for lack of better term, like derezzed away from his face, kind of pulled back from his face, and you saw the uh, the face of the, the Sinkai leader, um, it would uh, it would be safe to assume that uh, this guy is uh, in fact um, of the uh, the same species. Hmm. Um, with your crit on a twenty, uh, you recognize vaguely uh, the face you once saw in the blade. Um, Back in the um, in our grim orchestra or arc. Now, before Gwendolyn asks any questions, she needs to preamble. Um, but, um, uh, so, hello, um, I'm Gwendolyn. Um, not sure if you recognize me. So, I mean, be a little bit miffed if you don't, but that's fine. Um, uh, so, um, just to give you a little bit of background, and she kind of like sits down. <laughs> The, like as as much as she can in in corporeal form. Um, uh, honestly, I, I think if that's the intent, her bot like it's her body literally is just like yeah, you like you know get cross legged and you may just be floating there, but to your your mind recognized it as I this is sitting. So yeah, I buy that. Um, and I think in Gwendolyn's head, she's kind of like running through 
Um, there's like all these questions that she really wants to know. And she's kind of like, she kind of pauses and thinks back to like what she's learned from Duncan, because it's like, this probably isn't the time to be self-serving if there's any time. So I think. Well, at a buffet where you have to serve yourself is the right time yeah. for self-serving I've found. I think, I think she just kind of, it kind of stops like mid diatribe about like about to go into like Sinkai attack and like what the fuck mm -hmm. is going on and and just says um all right what can I do to help you um slowly um he kind of like rolls himself over clearly very painfully like this is not a a happy rollover um and he kind of like falls onto his back and edges himself up on an elbow um and, and kind of gives you an appraising stare uh you did earlier blatantly just say like you should recognize me um so yeah. let's see if he does um yeah he uh he nods slowly um and uh kind of says like Ah, oh, yes, yes, you, you wield the blade now. We killed Necrotus. I remember you. Are you still alive and wielding the sword? I assumed you would be dead by now. You don't seem great at it. Um, well, you know, I'm like, I mean, I'm learning. Right? It's all a process, but I mean, um, yeah, I'm still alive. I mean, not quite as alive in like in the same way as like I used to be, but like I'm still here. So. And he kind of nods and he says, "Yes, that sensation is one I am eternally familiar with." Um, and he kind of just like gives a very arch gesture uh, to the space. Uh, you really do get the sense of like you suspect this guy would be honestly quite at home in the um uh, the court of orvel in terms of you've seen the rolled wrist gesture before it's a very courtly <laughs> manner yeah. um but it's like if this guy got like fired out of a cannon <laughs> like there is just something to seeing this amount of kind of dignity and status but from someone who just got their ass it's like loki being on the ground at the end of avengers being like i'm still important like it, it really yeah. is still like one of those people where the airs are so deeply ingrained in them that even burnt out on the ground, they can't help uh, but put on said mm. airs. Um, but uh, he nods uh, and um, creakily and kind of says, uh, well, uh, suppose I cannot fault you for learning. We must all learn the blade at some point or another. Thank you for surviving. It is, must say, you wield the blade in ways none have in generations it is refreshing i had not tasted necrotis in some time so and he kind of again gives like a little like from the ground bow and says uh a thank you <laughs> for that um as to how you can help uh and at this point he does force himself up um on his, his elbows um, and he uh, he flashes you uh, that uh, that smile that you remember seeing reflected on the edge of the blade. Um, and he says, uh, the real question, I believe, is how much are you willing to give to restore the power of the blade? As you can see, I'm somewhat worse for wear. Um, and he kind of gestures now grandly to the entire space and he says, the entire blade is now worse for wear. I can repair it, but I will need to feed. What? Well, like, what is, okay. So what does that mean exactly? Um, like, we've got like fish and stuff. <laughs> he, uh, he legitimately like has a similar chuckle to Tyler's there where it's just kind of a like, that's adorable. What a quaint idea. Um, and uh, <laughs> I think Gwendolyn, like she, she knows what's coming up. She's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, uh, he nods his head and he says, uh, trust me, master, this is not an ideal 
situation for me either. But Elos himself was always very, very insistent that I use my powers to keep the blade keen. In their hand, it was truly a weapon of delightful destruction, and I wish to do the same for you, but given the lack of necrotists around these days, it would seem, I'm afraid, desperate times call for desperate measures. I will need to feed off of your very essence in order to power the blade once more. Trust me, it's awkward for me, too. You are not to my taste. What? So I can't just, like, find another necrotist and, like, stabby stab? Have you ever found another necrotist? Well, no, but I'm just like... When Elos finally put me down, they told me there were no more necrotists, and thus they no longer required my services. I mean, clearly they were wrong. Well, yes. And, like, he kind of smiles at that, and he's like, (laughs) Elos was many things, but all-knowing. They were not. Uh, and there's a little, like, <laughs> servant chuckle, <laughs> for lack of a better term. There's just kind of like a hmm. <laughs> bit of a Sam the Eagle uh, amount of snark on, on the edge of that. All right. So let's just, supp- let's just, for argument's sake, say that, like, if I were to agree to this, what would that look like? Well, mechanically, if you turn to page 93 of the <laughs> DM's menu. Um, no. Um, <laughs> so um, he, uh, what he's proposing is that um, there will be a cost to you, Gwendolyn, a permanent cost uh, in yeah. order to repower the blade. Um, you get the sense uh, as as uh, um, he describes it. Uh, he also introduces himself, so I can just stop talking about him in vague terms, as Hesop. Hesop. Um, so Hesop... Um, Basically describes like the he is acting as the um, his power like basically there's this clearly a symbiotic relationship going on between him and the blade mm-hmm. um, because he is so weakened uh, the blade itself is weakened he basically maintains the blade and kind of powers it uh, from from inside here um, so he needs to he needs to fuel up now he's not going to like take a bite out of your arm or anything it's literally like a like a soul drain um he needs to be able to to charge up a bit so that he can get the blade back online um mechanically there is there will be a cost a permanent cost to Gwendolyn. um yeah. he wouldn't know what that is nor would you um it's just a again it's like a how how much are you willing to sacrifice to get the blade back up and running kind of question um so you as a player can know that it will mechanically affect your character, but for the yeah. two of you, it's literally like, uh, I need to drain some essence to to get this back up and running. Keep in mind, though, you do still have, um, because I feel like your first question was a very kind of logical, I'm just going to ask you this question. Um, you do still have one banked uh, question from your um, crit success that uh, mm. you have not used. I'm giving that one to you as like, a free, you would normally have to roll for this information. You don't need to roll for mm-hmm. this information. Roll. Because honestly, rolling a crit on like a, what should I ask this guy is always rough. So I want to make sure you get something good out of it. <laughs> I killed the tank with a single punch. I asked a guy a question and he answered the one question. I, mm. <laughs> oh, there we go. Just balancing the scales. Um, all right. One, uh, this is a hard one. Um, look, um, he saw, like, I just, if, if I, if I do this, um, I just, want to know and I hope you'll answer me truthfully are you a good person um and uh at that he uh his laugh becomes a little less gentle and a little more uh maniacal 
Um, he almost uh, cackles uh, and uh, at this point kind of does lay down uh, against the ground and kind of stare back up into, into the mists um, and says, uh, Master, if I was a good person, do you think I would have been trapped in here and forced to power a sword for eternity? No, I am not a good person. Yet my punishment, it would seem, is to serve, if not good people, then at least competent people. Hmm. And he kind of like leans up and, and gives you a look and he's like, and no, I cannot escape from the blade if that is what you are asking. I have tried for centuries. It is not possible. I mean, you just said you weren't a good person. So now how can I trust you? Um, at this, he does fully sit up and just kind of gesture around very slowly and very sarcastically. Um, and uh, he says, uh, my existence consists of exactly one thing, and that is powering the Elos blade, as you seem to call it. I literally have nothing else going on down here. There is nothing for me to do and nowhere for me to go. All, right. All I can do is power your sword and allow you to kill your enemies. You don't need to trust me. You just need to understand that I am, for lack of a better term, a fucking battery that you can use or not. So the question I have to you is, do you want a cool battery in your sword or do you just want a rusty piece of metal? Well Oh, look, I mean, like, you gotta understand my reticence about this, right? Like, I just, like, wanted a best friend and got, like, forced out of my own body for, like, a really long time. And, like, and wasn't expecting that. And all I wanted that. to do was lead my people in a grand galactic crusade. And sure, I ate one or two of them. Galactic. But really, who can blame them? Yes, look, I don't want to bandy words with you here. You wanted a best friend. I want her to become the supreme god emperor of all that live, and instead, they stuck me in here, amidst the smoke, to run a sword. We all have problems. I just don't know if I want to give you part of my whatever, essence. He shrugs, and it's just like, you're the one who came in here to talk to me. Look, are you going to die if I don't do this? No, I'm going to sit here looking this shitty for eternity. It's not an ideal situation. So I could, like, find you, like, someone else's soul to be, like, feed off of or something, right? Are you soul bonded to the weapon? I think so. Then no. Oh, shit. I mean, like, do you already have part of my soul? Is that what soul bonding is? He like just, it's like, more rolls just like his <laughs> eyes back into his head and lies down and just full on Charlie Brown arcs <laughs> and just echoes uh, amidst the uh, the smoke um, and slowly it begins to swirl uh, back around him uh, and he, he begins to, to start to uh, disappear. Okay, f- fine. Let's just do this. <sighs> the the mist stops and kind of parts and kind of leans up and he says. No takesy backsies. Well, I mean, like, I have to admit, like, you haven't been very reassuring up to this point. He shrugs and is like, I'm a convicted supervillain. They put me in magic smoke jail for eternity. What about that suggests I would be reasonable? I don't know. And then he stops, I mean, he like catches himself, and then he just begrudgingly adds, Master, and he bows a little bit. I'm writing down magic smoke jail. <laughs> I love that as a term. <laughs> and then the smoke just starts closing in again <laughs> as you prevaricate. Yeah. Uh, mm. Mm. I don't know, maybe I should consult Duncan. Um, oh wait, no, do you know what Duncan said? Make decisions on my own. I have to be a leader. I'm doing this. It's what he would want. Um he just shrugs um and says 
So, the one who became God Emperor is known as Duncan. Curse you, Duncan. Uh, then he like hobbles over to you. Uh, he, said, he holds out his hand. He says, well, I assume the one giving you orders is the wielder of the Ellos Blade. Must be be some kind of God Emperor, yes? Uh, no, he's he actually, funnily enough, he serves me. By the stars, kind of. what a mess you all have made of this galaxy. Uh, and with that, he uh, thrusts his arm into your chest uh, and rips out your spectral heart, uh, at which point Yay. you are ejected um, from the sword. Um, your spirit uh, slams into Duncan, um, passes through him. Um, I feel like it's a bit of a Peter getting slimed situation where Duncan, you kind of fall back off your chair. There's no like slime or anything. It's just like, you could definitely feel a presence move through you, which is in no way great. Um, and Gwendolyn, you're left uh, kind of casting about for your armor uh, for a moment uh, before um, being able to, to fly back into it. Um, you feel uh, you feel like trash. Uh, you feel yeah. uh, 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 very weak. Um, and uh, you are going to lose uh, eight HP permanently. That's fair. Um, that said, uh, the blade is, um, flecks of rust are beginning to come off of it. And, um, you can see like thin seams of light, um, sort of a, uh, a, a red, uh, almost molten light, um, beginning to kind of <clears throat> think of the reverse of an icicle melting. Like they're just sort of slowly, um, these tendrils begin to form across the, the pits in the blade. Mm. Um, you can tell the blade is, again, it's it's going to be a slow process, but the blade does seem to be healing, quote, quote, for lack of a better term. All right, you did it. I mean, what? running through me was kind of weird, but other than that, net gain, he's just like shoving himself back up and <laughs> to his feet, having yeah. fallen over. Sorry about that. Wasn't really my choice. Aesop isn't exactly the gentlest type. Wait, who's Aesop? Aesop? Is this another fish? No, he's the evil guy in the blade. Wait, that blade is evil. No, he, he it's to just like and says, imbued with, him. I think it's just like imbued with an evil, an evil, like bad person. You I don't know, he talked about blade. like galactic crusade and like wanting to be like god emperor or something, but like he seems to be stuck in the blade and I mean that seems to have held up, so. Wait, so what, what does he look like, this he sop? Um, he's kind of like, um, kind of like Sinkai people. Wait, you're telling me there's a Sinkai stuck in that blade? Yeah, I think so, but I mean, he was all like burnt and charred. I mean, he's stuck in the blade. Like, I'm pretty sure he can't leave. Like, he would have left by now, trust me. Oh, no, but what I'm saying is this is a fantastic opportunity. So what did you learn about the Sinkai or their weaknesses or how we can free Orville from their reign? Well, I mean, like, I didn't want to judge. So, I mean, like, you were always like, I have to think about, like, other people and not be so self-centered so i was what? like mainly focused on like getting getting him back to like health so wait, wait what did you give the intergalactic criminal trapped inside your sword just a just a little essence of myself Could you just a little bit though repeat that please um uh just a tiny a tiny bit of my my, I guess, essence of of my soul, I think. I hate to draw what could be called a very apt comparison. Do you remember what happened to Jossie when a certain amount of Jossie's essence was twisted by a somewhat dark force? Yeah, but, like, look at me. And I, like, just put my hands up, like, um, hey! As you do so, <laughs> like, one of your arms falls off, and you just look at it for a second... And there's kind of an awkward silence. And then you just like reach down and reattach it and it works. Uh, but you realize that um, whatever you've given may have, have uh, at least temporarily weakened your uh, your hold on on the, uh, the emulium. Well, you know, that's done that before, right? So. <clears throat> At which point uh, the sheet kind of flies open and um, a bleep comes flying through and says, He's getting cold. 
uh, and with that, you're um, swept out into the, uh, the the living room uh, to finally meet with uh, your saviors and to find out what exactly is happening in this valley. As Duncan, the ramifications of what Gwendolyn have done weigh heavy on your soul. This episode of Curse Code and Crown Sound was mixed and edited by Laura Hamstra, and the campaign was created by Tom McGee. Our original theme music was composed by Landon Noblock, and Curse Code and Crown's logo was created by the brilliant Decapitated Markers. If you want to follow our players or our DM on Twitter, you can reach out to Laura at EL Hamstring, Ryan at the Ryan LeBlanc. Tyler at Tyler underscore Hewitt, Tom McGee at McGee TD, or you can message our whole company at Dum Dum Dice. So please join us again for more Curse, Code, and Crown! Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christian Manicola, the half-blind prophet. Christopher Little, Sue One, George Dolby. One True Artistry, Orion Birchfield. Lord Abradovic, Noel Lewis, Scott Garland, Anthony Griffin, Benjamin V, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Cade Peters, Richard Cranium, Anna Zed, Eric Williams, Logan, Fire on Friendly, Acrix, Cameron Ezel, Grandma Likes D and D, Alan, Austin Nut Powers Fry. Stabby Stranger and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them and a little bit of thanks to you.